here with experiment number three, calculations for the testing air on some gas laws, late night lab. There's a funny thing about this experiment number three. They ask you for the mass of the air. However, um, we never measured in that lab the mask of just the flask and its stopper and all of that. So. I have gone ahead and I have done that for you. Let me show you. In this late night lab, you could see here that I have the flask and the stopper and it is empty of air. Um, we saw in my previous video that putting a pressure gauge on does not affect the mass and that is weird but it is so and you could see whoops sorry you could see that the okay whatever you could see that the um, the pressure here it's in units of psi but I want it to be in units of atmospheres okay there it is you could see that the pressure <coughs> is zero atmospheres so there is no air in this flask so just the flask and its stopper they weigh 88.000 grams, okay? Now, this uh, getting this mass is not in the procedures, I think, because it is a little confusing uh, when you try to get this mass. And here's why it's confusing. When you put the container on here, the container is 88.000 grams. But if you seal the container like this, uh, it is 88.179 grams. So does the 0.179 come from this stopper? Apparently it should because I see a stopper on there and I saw the mass change. But then, you know, if you take the air out, you cannot take the air out by putting zero atmospheres of air. But you can take the air out by um, putting some number that is gosh darn close to zero atmospheres of air. So that number was so gosh darn close to zero that for our practical purposes, it is zero atmospheres of air in here. And that gets you 88.000 grams for the flask and the stopper and, uh, and, and that's it. So what does this mean? This means that the late night lab is considering the stopper to have a zero mass, which of course is impossible. But it also means that the first uh, piece of data that I had there, um, the 88.179 grams for the uh, flask and air at one atmosphere, that was um, for experiment number three, the 88.179 grams, that 0.179 comes from the air at one atmosphere. So you just have to assume that all the, um, ma the, the flask and all of its attached apparatus, such as the stopper, they are all at 88.000 grams. So to get the mass of air, you subtract 88.000 grams. The pressure here was one atmosphere and the moles of gas is something that you need to calculate using the formula that is given in the background information of the lab manual. And I will show you how to calculate that. And then you'll have to get the grams per mole. And I'll show you how to calculate that also. So let us, um, let me get a board for you here. trying to erase this board but it is not responding ah here we are never mind I erased the board okay so remember in the background information of the lab manual um, there was this equation PV equals NRT N is the moles and we are interested in the moles of gas for this portion of the table moles of gas in moles so I divide both sides by RT and that gives me just N alone. 
So n is PV over RT. Now for us, R is this number all the time. The units are liters, atmospheres, over moles, Kelvin. Okay? It's this number because we're using atmospheres, and this is the R for atmospheres. So the pressure is here, one atmosphere. Now I'm plugging in the numbers. The volume is always the same for us in this experiment. It was 150. 0 0.00 milliliters, but you must convert it to liters. So 150.00 milliliters in liters is moving the decimal place to the left three times. One, two, three. That's 0 0.15000 liters. Okay? I'll just abbreviate, abbreviate that to 0 0.150 since there are other numbers in this calculation which only have three significant figures. So everything is going to have just three significant figures. Now the R is 0 0.0821 liters, atmospheres, moles, kelvins, and the T. Now the T is something that we didn't change. Did we? Did we change the temperature um, in experiment number three? No, I could see we didn't change the temperature. It was strictly a matter of pressure and um, uh, mass. So, I'll just give you the temperature of the room. The temperature of the room was 21.5 degrees Celsius. However, um, we cannot use degrees Celsius in, in any gas calculation. It's okay to use it in a graph, but not in a gas calculation. So I must add 273.15 to this in order to convert this to Kelvin. And that will give me 294.7 Kelvin. Um, it is actually 294.65, of course, but when you add with significant figures, the answer can only have the decimal place of the roughest um, number. This is the roughest number because it goes up to the tenths place, whereas the other number goes up to the hundredths place. So the answer can only go up to the tenths place too. So we need to round that 294.65 to 294.7. This is a K for Kelvin. I've put the units in here just so you could see them canceling. Units, liters, cancel. Atmospheres, cancel. Kelvin, cancel. I just have moles left, so the answer is going to be in moles, as is appropriate. So the answer here is going to be 1 times 0.15 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 294.7. That's 0 0.00. 6199, so that's 0.00620. Okay? 0.00620. Now notice, when you do, the, if you're going to use your calculator for this, you cannot say 1 times 0.15 divide 0 0.0821 times 294.7. That will give you the wrong answer. You can say, 1 times 0.15 divided by parenthesis 0.0821 times 294.7 parenthesis equals. That would be okay. You could also say, as I said today, 1 times 0.15 divide 0.0821 divide 294.7. That will be okay on your calculator. The, the issue is, um, let me show you. Point oh uh, oh six two zero. Let me just write this down. Point oh oh six two zero. Okay. So the reason why um, you have to be careful on your calculator in that way is because if you say one times point one five divide um, point oh eight two one times two ninety four point seven. 
if you do this on your calculator, your calculator thinks of it as this. Which is not what you intended. You wanted this number to be under here. So to accomplish this correctly, you have to use another divide sign right there. But if that looks too weird to you and you prefer to have the time sign there, you need to use parentheses around these things. Okay? And now I will calculate the molar mass of the air. In grams per mole. How do I do that? I take these grams of air, 0.179, that's right, 0.179 right there, right there. Take those grams of air and divide it by the moles, 0 0.00620. So take the calculator, 0.179 divided by 0 0.00620. I got 28.9 grams per mole. 28.9 grams per mole. Okay? So I'm going to do that. The, I'm going to do that whole calculation for all the data. But I will show you in a moment that you could use Microsoft Excel or Google Spreadsheets or OpenOffice Calc or, or Plot.ly or your favorite spreadsheet program to do this for you. The mass of error is just going to be the same number without the 88, remember. And the pressure. Okay, now I'm not going to calculate these um, by myself. Uh, that's going to take too long, and it's going to be too much use of the calculator for me. You can do this all on your calculator if you want, but I'm gonna now I'm now gonna do this um, using my favorite spreadsheet program, the free open office calc. So here it is. The, the relevant data for calculation are 0 0.179, 0 0.238, 0 0.299, 0 0.378, and 0.437. And then the pressures are 1, 1 1.33, 1.67, 2.11, 2.44. Now remember, for the moles of gas, um, do I still have the calculation up for you? No? Rats. I do. Okay, so there it is. So for the moles of gas, we're doing this stuff that I had done in purple for you. So it's going to be equals the pressure and this is the pressure times the volume is always going to be the same 0 0.150 divided by this number R is always the same 0 0.0821 divided by the temperature in this lab that temperature is always the same 294.7 equals and I'm going to have that done all the way through Did you see that now, um, I'm going to have to do some rounding here, but I'm not sure that I want to do that all by myself. I'm going to have Microsoft Excel round these guys for me to the one, two, three, to five places after the decimal. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not Microsoft Excel. This is something else. This is OpenOffice Calc. This is LibreOffice Calc. So I'm going to round to five decimal places like that. And it does it for me. And I'm going to round, oops, sorry, oops, sorry. So I'm, um, when, I, when I make mistakes, I just press escape, and then uh, um, it, go, it just cancels what I just did. You can also press Control Z, but that might get a little more complicated at some times. So now I'm going to. Um, these numbers, uh, to get three significant figures, I need to round to four spots after the dot rather than five because these are larger numbers. So round this to four decimal places. Okay, so that's going to give me all the, all the numbers that I need for the moles of gas. Copy those in. 
really recommend you use a program like this instead of just your calculator because it's a lot more fun and the skill that you build by using such a program um, is kind of valuable in, in later in life I guess in your career maybe if you do research in the hospital or or if you have a lot of patients data that you have to with numbers to crunch maybe and um, here I'm gonna do uh, the mass divided by the moles so this is gonna be equals the mass 0.179 divided by the moles 0.00620 I press the enter key I get a number and I'm gonna click and drag the little square at the bottom right corner to populate the rest of the uh, cells of this column with the proper calculation and I'm gonna round this all to the nearest tenth because I want only three significant figures so that means one decimal place so it's all 28.9 whoops I keep on pressing tab I probably shouldn't do that So they're all, all my results say 28.9 grams per mole. These numbers will all be different for me uh, compared to you. All these numbers will be different. However, this number will all be the same for you. So if you don't get 28.9, you've done something wrong, probably. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be 28. It could be 28.8. It could be 29.0. You know, if you just need to be around 28.9. Thanks. So now... Um, the next problem helps us to identify what gas is in the air. So these are the gases that are in the air. And now you need to um, calculate the average molar mass of the gas in the air. So um, I will do it partially, and then um, I'll expect you to do it completely. All right? So the way to do this is to multiply the molar mass of each molecule times its percentage and then add that number to all the rest of these treated in the same fashion. I'll show you what I mean. Whoops. Nitrogen is um, 28 Point zero grams per mole and I'm going to multiply it by 78.084 percent like that and um, oxygen is 32 grams per mole and it's 20.947 percent so that means 0.20947 and um, argon is uh, 40 grams per mole, 39.98 something, right? And that is 0.934. And CO2 is 44.0 grams per mole. And that's point oh. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 0.934% is not 0.934 as a decimal. Remember, percent means parts of 100. So 0.934 is 0 0.00934 as a decimal. Okay? All right, I'll let you figure out the molar mass of carbon dioxide, and I'll let you figure out the decimal for 0.033%. Just move the dot to the left two spots. All right, so I'm going to add this up. So CO2, I'll let you do. You do. You do. And I'm going to multiply these together, multiply these together, multiply these together, and add up the answers. Okay? Here, let me give you an example. Let me just lose these two parts. Let me just pretend it was just nitrogen and oxygen. Um, I'll multiply them together and I'll get the answers. So, 28.0 times 0 0.78084 equals. 21.9 so that's 21.9 plus now the, for the oxygen 
32 times 0 0.20947. 6.70. So this total is, I'll just add them on the calculator, 28.6. So this total is 28.6, and this is all in grams per mole. So the molar mass of air, for me, is 28.6 grams per mole, because I'm only using nitrogen and oxygen. Now you need to do that same thing, that same multiplication, followed by addition, for all these guys and you will get some other number, not 28.6, okay? Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how do I find this number? How did I get 28? How did I get 30? How did I get 40? And for carbon dioxide, how did I get 44? If 44 is indeed what carbon dioxide's molar mass is, I'll let you figure that out. But let me show you how to figure it out. For nitrogen, nitrogen is N2, is two of these guys, 14 plus 14, 28. Oxygen is O2. It's two of these guys. 15.9994 four times two is 32.0. Argon. Oh, I had it wrong. Um, I, I said 40.0, but it's really 39.9. So uh, you must do it correctly. I'll expect to see that correct on your work. Sorry about mine being wrong there. And then carbon dioxide, well, it's CO2, so it's one of these plus two times that. Okay, that's how I got my answer. I mean, that's how I got my number there. Let's see you get it for yourself. The instructions that I just said are, are um, written here for you, if, if you prefer that. And um, um, you'll just write your answer here. And you can show some calculation. I always like to see some calculation. But if you end up not showing calculation, I'm not going to be um, bent out of shape about that. How well does the theoretical value... Okay, so here um, you use this whole formula. Let me write it in a, um, a little more familiar way for you. So the percent error in this in this lab it's called percent deviation. It's going to be equal to your experimental, which in my case was 28.9 grams per mole, minus your theoretical, which you just calculated up there. In my case, remember it was 28.6 grams per mole. It's the absolute value of that divided by the theoretical, the stuff I just calculated up there. For me, it was 28.6. For you, it will be something else. Okay, it's very likely that your experimental value, 28.9, will be the same as mine. What they mean by experimental value is the value that is in this table right here, this value right there. That's what they're talking about, 28.9. Okay, there's this problem that we're on. And um, this might work. So, uh, and, and of course, it's times 100%. All right, so this is going to be for me um, point. 3 over 28.6 times 100%. This is going to be very close to 0%, but not quite 0%. So 0.3 over 28.6 is 0.0105. So multiply this by 100%, and I get 1.05%. But there's only one significant figure here because I did a subtraction problem and I lost some significant figures. So um, the answer has to be in one significant figure. This is my answer. If you use more than one significant figure, I'm not going to mind anymore. I've decided that um, for nurses, significant figures may not be as significant as I once thought that it may be. The molecular weights discussed here are for dry air. Would you expect the apparent molecular weight of non-dry air to be less or more than for dry air? Okay, so I want you to think about that. When, when they say dry air, they mean the following. Now watch this. They mean that these are the gases in the air. There is no water there. There is no representation from H2O. Okay? So let me write those down in a, in a more familiar way for you. There's N2. There's O2. There's argon, CO2, and water, H2O. So if this air were to be calculated, if you were to find the molecular weight of this air instead of this air, 
then do you think this molecular weight would be higher? Or do you think it would be lower? And why do you think so? Now let me give you a hint. What is the molar mass for water? What is that number? Is that number going to be generally higher than most of the molar masses for these numbers? Remember for this it was 28 grams per mole, for this it was 32 grams per mole, for this it was 39.9 uh, grams per mole. Is it going to be generally higher than those numbers? Or is it going to be generally lower than those numbers? And if it is higher or lower than those numbers, then is the presence of water in air going to skew the average molar mass, the average molecular weight up or down? Okay, this is just like um, this is just like um, playing volleyball. You know, if all of your if these are all your players, and they're all good players, then by adding this bad player, would that increase or decrease your score? Or if you're playing water polo, and all of these are bad swimmers, but you add just one really good swimmer, right? Would that increase your average scores? On your games or would it decrease your average scores on your games this is the kind of question that this is and it requires your thought and that's all i'm gonna say about that <laughs> all right that's it thank you um have a good time use the old gray matter as much as you can thank you